Yo boys, it is time to head back to the wilderness to settle some unfinished business. We had that massive wilderness rework some time ago, revamping a bunch of wildy content, the bosses, the revs, introducing the Void Waker and the Revenant weapon upgrades. Revenant's unique drops also got buffed too. There's no better time to work on some wilderness PVM goals. I did get the rev upgrades for the damn Receptor and the Figure's Mace, and also completed the Void Waker. And took a break after that to use all these weapons but i need to grab the crossbow upgrade piece as well so it is time to return for that once i complete all the upgrades though i want to segue into another wilderness grind which is laren's keys for some dagon high ropes for the collection lock slot i finally want to try my luck since i do have the best weapons for wilderness slayer and i'm just excited to make the best use of these weapons Wilderness Slayer is one of the few content pieces that I have yet to explore in depth, so I'm excited to see what it's all about. Also, I only need the Ancient Totem to complete the Rev Log, so I figured I'll try to get that on a Revenant task while grinding for the Laren's Keys. So today's episode is going to be full of interesting Wilderness content. Look forward to it. Okay, time to resume some wildy stuff to get the Venonatus and maybe get these two along the way i don't think it'll take too long to get this though so but yeah we are gonna go set it up i got the nice anti peking gear set up for this as well with pretty low risk but pretty effective so uh yeah this should be good oh fucking hell what dude pray oh come on you got so lucky hit me for 67 pk died after you uh, oh, defeated! <laughs> Yo, 1v1. <laughs> nice. Okay. Alright. Nice KO, bro. Where you go? Oh my god, I actually got it already? Oh, I'm an idiot. I, uh... I'm an idiot. I actually put in the looting bag. Don't do that, guys. It should have been closed. What? Okay, well, I come back for one day. Before we go any further, what makes a good MMO, guys? One big aspect that makes a good MMO is the ability to feel progression at every corner. It is a big reason why the game we play works so well, and we keep coming back. And I would wager any good game should come with an interesting progression system. I want to talk about another game that features a great progression system where you create teams of heroes to conquer and defeat interesting and powerful enemies. Improve your various heroes by raising their skills and improving their gear. Hero Wars is the game that has mastered this genre of MMOs. Hero Wars is super easy to get into as you unlock heroes with different talents. You can assemble a team of five heroes to clear various campaigns including multiplayer ones to progress your characters and unlock more rewards there's also pvp in the arena and grand arena feature for those that want to focus on mastering pvp this game is very free to play friendly and does not run ads so it's all about the game experience and not tempting your pockets it is friendly to players of all ages so do not hesitate to try out hero wars Gather and create the best team of heroes for any campaigns and PvP encounters and experience a fun progression. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and 5 awesome heroes to start dominating in Hero Wars right away? Too slow. The answer is in the link in the description below. Play Hero Wars now! So I was expecting probably at least a week to get this upgrade, but it's only been day one. But I am down to still commit to the next few days just to see if we can pull some extra collection lock slots. We are done with the uh, wildy weapon upgrades already. Okay, that was uh, I guess that's nice, you know, after the the rough uh, Void Waker grind. But holy shit, sweet! <laughs> All right, so we got the crossbow. Uh, I currently use it mainly at Nightmare just to tag the Sleepwalkers. So uh, it's going to be the same thing with the Webweaver bow. I'm going to use it for the same reason. Uh, it does have a spec. Fire four times in quick succession, dealing reduced damage, inflicting poison. 
I don't know if this special has any good uses outside of the Wilderness. Like Wilderness Slayer and stuff. And Wilderness Bossing. But yeah, I'll definitely look into it. See if there's any. As with all the Revenant upgrades, it is more accurate and hits harder than before. So that's nice. Alright, one second. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god. No way, that's so funny. Wow, what is going on with these people? Okay. Alright, well, that was interesting. So, I only managed to get an extra Fangs of Venonatus during the extra time at Venonatus. And I think that's a good ramp up for Wildy bosses for the most part. I still do want to complete the ring, the slots, and the pets one day because uh, it's very viable now. But we'll save that for another time. I want to do another different type of wilderness content because we have all the wilderness weapons and upgraded versions as well. So this is the best time to go and check out some wilderness slayer with the wilderness weapons. It's going to be a good time. I cannot wait to collect some learners keys and see what that is all about. So on my first few days of trying out wilderness slayer to try to get some quick learners keys, there were some things that became very apparent that I should definitely focus on in order to get fast keys. The first one is definitely trying to do the Slayer tasks, the Crystallia ones, within the Wilderness Slayer Cave because you have a passive, I believe it's like 15% extra chance to get Lairn's Keys on anything you kill there. Right off the bat, that's amazing. So I avoid killing or doing tasks that are outside of the caves unless it's like a Scorpion task or Spider task or something like that where you can just cannon and get it done within like 2 minutes or something it's worth the points you get 25 points so you can use that to skip a much more worse task like for example ants or something like that this scorpion task literally took a minute so worth and then within the wilderness slayer cave there's plenty of different monsters but the monsters that you want to focus on the most and try to do the most is definitely the slayer specific mobs in the wilderness slayer cave so like net crowns dust devils Abyssal Demons, those are the juice. They are amazing because superior creatures, when they spawn, you kill it in the caves, which is on task, right? You get a guaranteed learns key. And if, let's say, I do an extended Necro task, right? It's like 200-ish. And then I use Slaw Bracelets. That's more like a 270, 300 size task. And because I've done the Elite tier of the combat achievements, superior spawns of 1 in 150 so every time i get like a dust devil abyssal demon task it's basically guaranteed two bonus keys just off the superiors and then you get a probably two to three just from killing them normally so it's fat every task of those you expect you know three four five keys no problem i'm gonna extend it now i don't have that many points but yeah i think the wilderness slayer will give me so many points that it'll be okay all right, we're going to extend Dust Devils, and we're going to extend Abyssal Demons for now, because those are the two that I've gotten. Also, we'll extend Necrowls when I have enough points. So, Abyssal Demons are a bit annoying, because Ice Barrage definitely sucks for Abyssal Demons, but if I bring Shadow, it's just too many Blood Runes for that. So, the next best thing that I came up with, or the best thing overall that I came up with, is just Smoke Barraging with the budget setup. So if I bring a Tall on Fire, I actually keep it if I die to a Picare. So that's nice. But I do risk a Cult, but if I protect item the whole time, the Cult is very unlikely to be lost. And luckily I have multiple, so I don't mind semi-risking the Occult. But yeah, Smoke Barrage Buzzer set up with Tall on Fire and only having to bring Air Runes is pretty nice. There you go, much better. Damn, 65k an hour, not bad for Abyssal Demons. Cool, without Cannon. Okay, this is crazy with the cannon. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god, my cannonballs are getting depleted so fast. It's actually insane. Holy. Damn, that was a good task. Guardian is pretty good. I guess I'll keep doing these, but... I did use like freaking 700 cannonballs though for this one task though. Wait, I still need one more to kill? Oh my god, I'm trolling myself. But anyways, I just got eight Larens keys from that jelly task actually crazy like what the hell what's your personal best guys let me know what 
Uh, okay, actually, this task would have been nine. <laughs> Holy shit. Nine Laren's keys, and I'm still at one, man. The slaughter is really getting it. Wow, actually, guys, my PB is nine in one task. Let me know where your PB is once again. I should gain 125 points for just doing 10 tasks normal of Wadi Slayer. So crazy. Oh my god. Holy fucking shit. Now that's a task. Now that I've got my toes a little wet in the Wilderness Slayer, I can definitely see that Wilderness Slayer has many really cool functions in terms of um, how you could utilize it. So the first one obviously is for Learn's Keys. For the collection log homies or you know iron man homies that want some resources uh, the second one is going for wilderness slayer points because as you can see every task is stupid points obviously though if you want to go for points you don't really want to extend tasks like i do for keys so they're kind of like inverses Cristilla gives a ton of the woolly tasks for bosses like bear tasks spider tasks scorpion tasks all those count towards the bosses like skeletons for Vedion, for example so yeah, you get a ton of boss opportunities through Crystallia. Yeah, I definitely want to avoid doing Slayer tasks outside of the cave, because yeah, I've done quite a few of random ones like Chaos Druids. Although it's nice for collection log stuff, I, I want keys first and foremost, and yeah, I don't think it's worth the time doing these tasks outside when you can get a bunch of tasks inside the cave. So it's done. I was like 70k an hour. Still my best, right? But um, could have probably been a bit better. But I kept having to bank because I keep running short on like runes, man. It's gonna take a bit of time for me to figure out the ideal amount of runes and stuff to bring for a certain wilderness task. But we're getting close, so that means uh, less wasteful banking. How many keys am I at though? 24. That's crazy. They finally made the giant keys stackable. Where was that when I was doing moss giant? Hey. Eh? Definitely doing Hell Giant tasks on, in the wilderness because I forgot about the double rates for the keys. Eventually, right, we want to get the Oberts Club anyway. So, yeah, definitely doing these Hell Giants. Not to mention they're really fast to do task wise, so it's worth the points. No way! <laughs> Oh my god, this guy. Ah, oh, he was 1 HP. Thamron Scepter is such a good weapon, man, for Wilderness Slayer. Just because compared to the other two weapons, you can mop so many things and only use one ether. I also absolutely dig the Trident option on the Thamron Scepter. Because you can switch between Autocast Ancients to just Trident single target option. And it's amazing because I love using it against the superior creatures when they spawn, especially the Great Necro. You want to kill that guy quickly. He can be a pain otherwise. So I found better ways to clump things like Necrorals because normally if you do it where you go around the corner, use a lot of run. And in the wilderness, that's not a great idea because you want to not bring too many stamina's in the wilderness so you can bring more food. And you want to keep your run uh, relatively high so you can be ready to deal with any pvp situation so the best way i found to deal with things like necrals is to gather them all as usual but instead of doing the corner trick you just want to drag your character to the general area uh, which is the east wall of where my character is now uh, doing it this way the necrals will already be clumped very close to each other without you having to cut the corners a billion times it's only just like usually one that that isn't in there, but I just go to the side, I move here, and then they all clump together, and then the rest is free. Damn, Necro Taz is actually insane uh, in the wilderness. I'm getting 84k an hour now that I know how to like group it a lot faster. With a cannon, I, I guess it can go to like 100k. I'm gonna open 50 just for a little taste test, and uh, hopefully we get a uh, one of those rope pieces. It's like one in 80 or something to get one of them. But uh, I think 50 is decent. That's like a 50% chance to get one by that point. So, yeah, let's open it up. Alright, boys, let's go. Let's do it. 10 keys at a time. Oh my god, why's my prayer on? Let's go. First, ooh, dragon dart tips. Oh my days. What the hell? That's criminal. Holy sh... That's crazy. What the hell is the rewards on this? Jesus! What are these... 
so I totally did not know what the average loot was like outside of just the dragon high chance and yeah it's pretty normal what i'm getting actually it's like 150k per key on average if you include the dagon high my favorite resource drop is definitely the dry and arrowheads though really good since i used up all my necks a long time ago yeah let's price check just 10 keys like holy shit two mil gosh I, uh pfft. okay that was a bad loot all right all right man yeah. what was that again what was this loot here 1.3 mil okay we're getting like over 100k a key easily oh let's go the arrow tips please let's trade coins what the hell oh no dang no dagon high boys no this is this is not uh unfor this is unfortunately uh, maybe oh no dagon high it's so sad Unfortunately, I think I'll grab a few more, I guess. But, oof, slightly demotivated from that one, you know? Not even on rate, so I can't complain. I need at least 30 more to be on rate for one one drop. I have a Revenant task. And, uh, I never did get this Ancient Totem. And I could get some Larynx Keys, of course, because it's a Wildy task. But yeah, scrolling up, it's like a 1 in 1k from, like, the higher level revs. I do have an extra crossbow, but of course, I'm going to try my very best to stay alive. It's kind of a risk here. I haven't been to revs in a long time, and it's different now. You know, it's different from the last time I did it, but yeah, I'm just going to make sure uh, I have protect item on for my dear life because I will keep this. So I should be okay. You know, if worse comes to worse, I brought a lot of supplies, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be extra careful. Looks like the Revenant drops are still incredibly good. I know they tweaked it a bunch of times throughout the years when I wasn't here. But yeah, it's really good at the moment. And I got over 500k in my looting bag just off of like 20 kills or something of dragons. But I didn't pick up everything, so it's probably a lot more than that. But yeah, really profitable. So I can definitely see why Revenants are very packed, which is cool to see. CBA, bro. Yeah, this task was quite annoying uh, just because I got attacked like six times just to kill like 60 dragons. So definitely is nice to know I only need to get the totem and I don't have to stay any more than that. Oh, I got it. Let's fucking go. Nice. All right. I guess I don't have to do revs anymore, to be honest. So that completes the Revenant log for me. Pretty much all my kills were years ago when things were quite different. But as of the latest update, you know, the Revenants are really generous with dropping the uniques nowadays. I've heard that if you do Revenants on Tass, extend them, and you kill the Revenant Skull, like a decent level, like Dark Beast ones or something, you have basically a 25% chance in that task to get a Revenant weapon. That's how much more common it can be now versus like the thousands of kills that it used to be. So really realistic. As far as going back, potentially, I might need to in the future for Ether, but I have a lot of Ether, so I should be okay. Holy shit. Damn, 50 Task Tree gave me 375 points. Oh my god. That's almost as good as like doing a 100 on a normal task. Oh my god, that's so good. Oh, Trover Parchment. Oh, that's the first time I've ever got one of those. That's uh, that's a keeper. Man, they're really rare. Uh, uh, yeah, really rare. First time ever. Never gotten anything like that before. That's really cool. So the Trover Parchments are really nice. So the Trover Parchments allows you to keep an untradeable item past 20 Wilderness if you were to die and lose it in the Wilderness because normally those items would be destroyed so let's say you trover parse a, a fern defender or fire cape if you were to lose those items past 20 wilderness for whatever reason you will keep it it might be really useful for me in the future if i'm feeling tempted to bring more firepower into the wilderness without worrying about losing it that's another trover parchment second one. Oh my god another trover parchment nice rare i'll take it 
Uh, look at this bot here. Holy bot. Look at this guy's name. Like, this guy's not even hiding it, dude. Oh my god, 316 damage. Another learns key? What the fuck? Are these fucking jellies? There's something wrong with them. <laughs> oh, I'm just getting lucky for sure, but damn. Consistent, Jesus. Yeah, this is uh, key number five. Yeah, what the f Let's see how many I'm at. 49! Oh, I mean, I have exactly enough. Let's open these 49. That'll be 100 KC on the dot, so. The big, big dream. And we make the impossible possible. Well, it's not that impossible, so it doesn't really apply, but all right. You know, for the drama, I'm just going to eat this. You can't complain yet because you aren't dry, so. Exactly, yep. Okay. All right, we are 80, 83. Three, two more, I think. Yep. All right, I'm just going to go for the spin, you know, get the badudo. Let's go. Damn it. All right, now, now you're allowed to get it. Ah, 14 keys. Oh, Let's get it. 13. Oh, sharks. Okay, 12. Damn it, Pearsons. And <laughs> the walk uh, away. <laughs> yeah, the misclick, yo. Oh, yeah. Nine. Oh, dude, this is looking bad, boys. This is looking bad. Damn it. Seven left. Jeez. This ain't like oh. leagues where I got it back to back, even though it's three times rate over there. Oh, number four, number three, number two. Oh, oh damn it. Oh, yeah. my God. No, oh, that's dang. all. It's fricked. Damn, 100 keys. All right, now we're officially overweight for one of them. <laughs> mm. All right, well, I want to collect some more keys, though, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah. we're, we're going to get another 100 uh, at some point, and we'll try again. I'm not going to give up. I'm committed, you know. Like, damn. You got those keys fast, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I freaking went to town, man. You know, this wi those wildy weapons, imagine if you especially would do the Damrons. Imagine if you would do this shit for like 10 hours a day. You got so yeah. Many keys. yeah, dude, huh. Damron Scepter is uh, literally the sauce, man. It's so good. Boys and girls, it's come to my attention that my bank space is almost completely maxed out. And there's really not a whole lot I can do anymore to save more bank space because I've done everything I possibly could. I've stored all my extra armor sets in my house that would basically give me more bank space. I've stored all the clue scroll rewards that I possibly could in my house, stored everything I possibly could in the hidey holes for the emote clues. But eventually though, the updates just keep coming and the items that comes with those updates, well, get stacked in the bank. So. And recently, the wilderness has really filled up my stuff. All these wildy updates means that I'm going to get a lot of these blighted versions of items and special teleports like these blighted anglerfish, the restores, and uh, look at these. Recently, I've been doing a lot of wilderness slayer, so I've been getting a lot of these blighted vengeance sacks, ancient sacks, and cool wilderness-only teleports. They're all really nice, and I don't want to just drop them. They're going to be super useful in the long run, especially because anti pk is so viable. Or wilderness related grinding so all right oh there it is the fourth option apparently okay easy to find i like to buy more bank slots so here we go i can sell you up to 360 additional slots in sets of 40 okay ah see the first set's only one mil that is too good way too good to not buy it uh, obviously this last one here though is a little ridiculous all right let's buy the first one okay 40 slots easy peasy Yes, I want to spend 1 mil on that. And wow, I'm already feeling so much so much more wide, you know? Really sick. But to be fair, I feel like I want to buy more. Yeah, I'll buy the fourth unlock. To be honest, that's it's not whatever. I got a lot of GP as you can see, and uh this is a good reason to use it. Honestly, I'm pretty rich, so I'm going to go ahead and spend some more money. Wow, uh 50 mil now. I mean, I'm cool with that. I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. All right. Well, might as well go in. I haven't spent money like this in so long. So it's kind of cool to see that there is still use for all these coins. But we're stopping here just because the next tier is over 100 plus mil. And I do not want to spend 100 
mil plus just for 40 bank slots. Look at how many bank slots I have now. 1,080. I still have 200 plus free slots to use. So that should last me for years. Bring it on, Jagex. I got the girth, boys. That cost me a total of 88 mil to get myself 240 bank slots. I think it's pretty worth it up to this point for most people.